Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by our second guest. She's an actor, a director, film producer. And I'm very excited because, of course, this is Women's History Month. And what better time to celebrate women who are making a mark in the film industry? I'm talking about none other than Chini Love Easy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having Welcome, me. Welcome, Chini. Thank you. First of so all, much. I must, I forgot to even add to your many accolades that you're a businesswoman as well. Yes. You know. But I'm not an actor. But, so I was going to ask mm, you, mm. I remember reading an article once that said that you had started out your journey as an actor. Many years so, ago. Many years ago. Tell us about it. How did you evolve from actor to producer, director? Okay, so basically, um, I've always wanted to be a producer. I, I just didn't want to get into the industry as a producer because I wanted to really get acquainted to the industry, make friends, and just know basically how it works. Do you get So, yeah, so I thought about, you know, just, okay, let me come in as an actor, but I really never had passion for acting. I could act, or well, I can act. But I think when I got to the level that I wanted to, I just thought, OK, Ginny, you know what? You need to focus on this. And this is interesting, because not everybody, usually what we see is people want to be in front of the camera, but you found out what, what your calling was along the way, and realized well, it's not too late to switch <laughs> and, and find my own focus. And now, yeah. as a woman, a woman in business, in the film business, how yeah. would you say it has been? And what are some of the challenges you say you've encountered as a woman? Gender-specific challenges. Okay, um, basically, um, uh, you know, I, I would say to you that I kind of got into the industry when the industry started recognizing women. So it's really, really not being difficult for me. If it was about six, seven years ago when, you know, it was a male-dominated industry in court, yeah, maybe I would have, you know, had issues. But I got into the industry when we already had, like, you know, big women filmmakers. So, like, people already understood that, you know what? You know, women are the ones doing, you know, running the industry, or rather not running the industry, but women are actually, you know, doing a lot for the industry, and women are actually topping up or, you know, matching up with the men. So when I got in, you know, I think the industry had accepted it, so it was really not so challenging as against, you know, so seven, eight years ago when it was just like the marketers and they were all male and all of that, yeah. So as a producer now, um, I know one issue producers usually have is cost. Yeah. cost of production of a movie or a series and stuff like that. And I know that some years ago, during um, Musa Yaradar's time, there were grants given mm -hmm. for the industry, even though we heard stories mm -hmm. concerning the grants. Now, has the government ever contributed to productions that you have done? If not, if you've done it personally, mm -hmm. how did you have to manage all of that? Huh. Okay, first of all, like I said, I, I got into all, rather I became, you know, important, or I became popular in the industry at the point where the government had really stopped, you know, I mean, you know, the last government was really, you know, very friendly when it came to entertainment, like, you know, the Jonathan era, and they got a lot of grants and people like Nollywood smiled. We had grants, we had support, we had, there was a lot, but I think this present government is kind of, I, 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 I mean, there's some few that are benefiting, but as, as against the last government that we had a lot more people benefit, I think it's, you know, we don't, we, they, they don't really support the government per se. So for me, I've actually never, like from even the past government to the present government, I've never been fortunate enough to have, you know, been lucky to have gotten a grant or been supported by the government. Everything I have done, every movie I have done, everything I have done has been my personal fund. So I used to do business way back when I was in the University of Benin and it was, I, I was doing very well. So when I wanted to start doing film, I'd made, I mean, good money from, that, from then. So I just thought to myself that, okay, I want to produce. I didn't have help from anywhere, I just had to, you know. So I had to stop, you know, fashion, the fashion business, stop selling clothes. And I now used all my savings, all my capital, everything to make my first film. You know, yes, yeah, so that's where I am. Though I, I did the second one and the, that one failed. I was back to zero. I like that you mentioned that. Let's talk about the one that failed because people oftentimes see the success stories, but they don't get to realize that there have been several other failure stories behind. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Okay, so in 2017, um, 2014, it was bad. It was a bad year for me. It was really like I was practically living off my mom. It was so bad. I'd done three films, and then people would say, oh, Chini, producer, producer, and they didn't know what I was going through. And, you know, couple coming from a fact where I've actually always kind of had it rosy growing up, and, you know, even, and then I went to school, started doing my business. I was making my own money. I bought my car with my money. You know, I'd already, I've always had it legit, and I'd always made money. And then all of a sudden, boom, 
I did, I did the first one and it wasn't bad. Like, it wasn't bad. I was able to break even and then I made some money. The first one wasn't bad. And I did the second one and it just went boom. It's like those days when you do films and then it was the Alaba market before the era of the cinema. It was the Alaba market. So we did like a lot of um, printing of CDs and all of that. I would go to the market and I would just see my CD in cartons parked there. And I'd be like, God, what's going on? And it's like it wasn't selling. It was a bad time for films generally. Films were not really selling, and I happened to have done, like, you know, when you have courage, you did the first one, so I printed a lot of copies, a lot, like, so I would go to the market and I would see my cartons. Bum, 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 bum. At the point, I just said, you know what? I'm never coming to this market again before I get depressed. I'm never doing this. I just told the market, I'll take the CD, take everything, I dash you, I'm gone. And I never went back to Alaba. Right, so, how did you <laughs> rise out of that? I've always been a go-getter. I've always been, I've never been the type to relent. I've always known what I wanted. So I knew that the challenge wasn't basically, because we, everything evolves eventually. So I, I thought it was evolving from the Alaba, the CD business, into digital, into cable, into, you know, that sort. So the industry had moved from the market to that point because we had, you know, a couple of people buying content and all of that. So we had moved from, you know, selling CDs and all that. So I had to move. But if I had wallowed in self-pity, I would probably have said, oh, I'm not doing this again. But I understood that it had moved from buying CDs to cable, to digital, to online and all of that. So I, I moved with it. Do you understand? I moved with it. So basically, I had to pick myself again. I had to, from the small, small here and there. I mean, I've always had the backing of my parents and all of that. I had to just do it again and here we are. And here you are, having mm -hmm. done a, another film, Hire a Woman. We have mm. the trailer of Hire a Woman. You're going to tell us about what led you to do that. And I think it's a very strategic movie, seen yeah. as the month of March is the month of women, and you're launching it in the month of women. But check out Hire a Woman, and when we come back, we'll still be speaking some more with Chini Love Eze. And all the fine boys and fine girls of Nollywood are in that film that you just did. Congratulations. Congrats, tell us about indeed. Hire like, a Woman. I'm seeing the cast, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Tell us about it. That was the aim. I, you know, because I, I, I'm very youthful. I like very youthful films. If you've been following my, like my, a lot of people say, Chini, why do you do love films? Why do you like romantic films? Are you that romantic? I'm like, it's not like I really like, I'm that romantic. I just like to do things that will appeal to the average Nigerian. And the average Nigerians want drama, they want love, they want romance. Because if you look at the age range of people that go to the cinemas, you realize that they're from 18 to like maybe 30. Those are the people that really go to the cinemas. We have the older ones, but they're lesser. So I try to, to, you know get that market and what do they like they like romance they like love they like you know drama they like all them girls you know they like glitz and glamour and all of that that's what they like so basically when you are doing a movie that you want to capture all the glitz you have to use fine people you have to use fine people because it appeals to people <laughs> no but it's the truth people always tell me Chini, you have a thing you want to use fine people i'm like i didn't make the camera we didn't make camera i didn't make it that Camera just, I, I want to be able to watch my movie or watch something and I'm like, ooh, okay, look at how you say, oh, nice. That's cool. And I've been getting that, oh, Chini, I can't wait to watch your film, everybody just fine. <laughs> well. All right, but the plot, the, the plot, you know, what, what should people, what feeling would you want people to leave after they see the, see the movie? You know, there are some movies that you leave, I, I have one at the tip of my tongue and I was very irritated when I was leaving the cinema. So what is the feeling that you'd like people to have? When they're done I want people to have that. Okay, so I hear everyone basically is about friendship. It's about you know, a couple of friends, or rather a group of friends that had not seen each other in a very long time, and then so one of them got engaged and like, okay, this is a great time for us to have like a reunion. And then you know, one of them, you know, that having to have dated one of them in the group, said he wasn't going because he really never got over her, and she kind of dumped him. So it's like I'm not going. So his friends, so like at work, his new friends at work, were like, okay, you have to. Don't go. tell us the full story. No, 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 no that's the okay. synopsis. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, 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 it's hire a woman. At the end, of, no, yeah. I'm not telling you the full story. It's hire a woman. So it's like the, it's from the trailer you could tell. Do you understand? So it's basically so. There's like you have to go for the reunion, and then he says, okay, fine. So what do you do? Let's hire somebody, and then he hires one of them, and they go. So it's all drama. Or, you know, then you really find out what happens, who is falling for to love or whatever it is. Basically, I want everyone to have that, you know, that it's a feel-good film. So what do you achieve when you have feel-good films? You just want people to be, you know, that smile that you can't really laugh, but you're smiling. You're just blushing. Yes. Yeah, you're because it's not like, it's not comedy that, yeah, mm -mm. But it's a movie that when you watch, you just be smiling. You see my ovaries. Yes. Yeah, oh my God, everybody is fine. The costume, the story, the love. Basically, you know, a movie that people are rooting for a particular person. It's like, yeah. oh no, he has fallen in love. You know, 
That's, it's a feel-good film, basically. I'm excited when I see women like you who are breaking glass ceilings in the industry and all the best with this project. We look forward Thank to you. seeing you having more projects and being featured on the international scene and Amen. having you again and again. Amen. And less so, more success stories. Mm -hmm, and that you mm -hmm, get to inspire mm -hmm. people through both your success and even the failures mm -hmm. that you've encountered mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We've been joined me. by Chini Love Eze, the producer of Hire Woman, and com it's coming out in a moment. Um, how can people get more information about you, about your latest project? Okay, so my handle is Chini Love Official. So Chini Love, one word, C-H-I-N-E-Y, then L-O-V-E, one word, and official, everything one word. So basically, when you follow me on Instagram, I'm kind of just, I'm not really on Facebook and the rest, but I'm on Instagram. And when you follow me on Instagram, you get to find out all my works and, you know, you know my YouTube channel. Everything about me is on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, and it'll be out. Um, March 29. All right, congratulations. Tomorrow. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.